Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Marcel in the garage here. Today I got a uh, project I'm pretty excited for, so I'm going to start sharing that with you guys. Um, over Black Friday I managed to pick up a Clayton off-road uh, two and a half inch Overland Plus kit for the Gladiator. So finally got a couple days. Weather looks like it's supposed to hold out over the next few, so uh, I'm going to try and get started today. So I'm just going to show you guys what I have uh, to install. Uh, do a couple measurements beforehand as well as after the fact and kind of show you how much I expect to gain from this lift uh, and also go over kind of some of the uh, the components uh, that are going to be going into it. I made a couple changes, uh, upgraded the springs, I have some different front bump stops, that sort of thing. So uh, I'll dig into that, but really excited to get this on. This is pretty much the last major piece of the build that I need. So with that, let's get started. All right, so excuse the mess, but uh... I already unboxed everything. I've had it laid out for a while since kind of before vacation uh, just to take an inventory and make sure everything looked good. Everything came uh, packaged from Clayton very well. It took quite some time to, to get it out, so uh, props to, uh, to Clayton there. But um, again, this is the uh, Overland uh, Plus kit, uh, the 2.5 inch uh, lift for the uh, Gladiator with the gas engine. So um, not to be confused with the diesel version because uh, they do provide different equipment for that. So. Um, but what I have, um, you can see I have the uh, Falcon front uh, Falcon Nexus 2.2, uh, I believe, front steering stabilizer up there. Um, also went with a set of the uh, Falcon 3.3 SP2, I believe they're called. Uh, quick adjustable shocks for front and rear. Uh, and obviously what that does is kind of give you that on-the-fly uh, damping capability. So going to be great for, uh, you know, kind of quick changes in terrain, go from street to, uh, to dirt, etc., um, obviously the track bars and whatnot. So uh, as far as the springs, um, I went with their standard selection up front, but for the rear, I did go with a set of their upgraded, um, HD springs, they call them. Uh, so essentially they're, you know, they're made to, um, provide a little bit more load leveling in the back, which I do need, uh, due to, um, the extra weight on the back between the, uh, the rear bumper, the roof rack, the camper shell, all the stuff in the bed, you name it, it's back there. So, and then kind of the last thing I think I got that's gonna be a bit out of the norm. Um, I do have a set of bump stops that I'm gonna replace uh, the stock front ones with. These are the Super Springs Sumo Springs. Um, basically just kind of a, an extra, you can see I can sort of squish them down a little bit, an extra bit of uh, progressive load leveling for the front uh, because I do have a uh, full width steel bumper as well as a uh, 10,000 pound winch out in front. So, but all in all, very happy with how the kit looks. I'm excited to get it on. Um, so let's get off to the side of the Jeep, kind of take some before measurements and um, we'll uh, project what we're going to be looking at as far as the lift. Obviously I'll take measurements after and then we will compare. So let's get started.
Yeah, but I know it was a pain to get mine on there. Yeah. This is where we're at. Control arms are on there, uh, loose. Um, so the shock is on there as well. So pretty much good to go. Just gotta add the sway bar uh, and link. Uh, but it started raining. Yeah, that's always a good time. Um, pretty, pretty nasty out. Um, I would like to try and finish up the rear, um, but we will see if the uh, weather cooperates. This is where day two left us. So after it got dark last night, the rain pretty much kept coming down. So we really just ended up throwing on the um, control arms on the right side and the left side, got them on there loose. Um, and that's pretty much where I stopped. So picking up today, I have the um, rear brake lines to install as well as the rear track bar and uh, sway bar uh, and links. Then that should be it for the back. We'll move on to the front after that. Hopefully the weather today holds out. I am hopeful.
and that's it. Overall, the kit took about 4 days and 12 to 14 hours of labor to knock out. If you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. I'll be sure to post up a video walk around and my initial impressions in the near future. So please like, subscribe, and hit the bell if you guys want to see more Jeep and off-road related content. Thanks for stopping by. Until next time, stay safe, and I'll see you all out on the trails.